Our loving God transforms us and makes us like his son by using trials and testings until his work is done. Good morning, good evening, and good night. Today I will be reading a devotional reading. If you would like to follow in the Bible, the scripture for today is James chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances are to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and the withers the plants, it blossoms, falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. James doesn't say if you face trials, but whenever you face them, he assumes that we will have trials and that it is possible to profit from them. The point is not to pretend to be happy when we face pain, but to have a positive outlook, like consider it pure joy, because of what trials can produce in our lives. James tells us to turn our hardships into times of learning. Tough times can teach us perseverance. We can't really know the depth of our character until we see how we react under pressure. It is easy to be kind to others when everything is going well, but can we still be kind when others are treating us unfairly? God wants to make us mature and complete, not to keep us from all pain. Instead of complaining about our struggles, we should see them as opportunities for growth. Thank God for promising to be with you in rough times. Ask him to help you solve your problems or to give you the strength to endure them. Then be patient. God will not leave you alone with your problems. He will stay close and help you grow. By wisdom, James is talking not only about knowledge, but about the ability to make wise decisions in difficult circumstances. Whenever we need wisdom, we can pray to God and he will generously supply what we need. Christians don't have a grope around the dark hoping to stumble upon answers. We can ask for God's wisdom to guide our choices. The wisdom that we need has three distinct characteristics. One, it is practical. The wisdom from God relates to life, even during the most trying times. It is not wisdom isolated from suffering and trials. The wisdom is the tool by which trials are overcome. An intelligent person may have profound ideas, but a wise person puts profound ideas into action. Intelligence will allow someone to describe several reasons why the car broke down. The wise person chooses the most likely reason and proceeds to take action. Two, it is divine. God's wisdom goes beyond common sense. Common sense does not lead us to choose joy in the middle of trials. This wisdom begins with respect for God, leads to living by God's direction and resort in the ability to tell right from wrong. It is a wisdom that James will describe. It is like Christ-like three. Asking for wisdom is ultimately asking to be like Christ. The Bible identifies Christ as the wisdom of God. You can read more on that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 and chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. 
To believe and not doubt means not only believing in the existence of God, but also believing in his love and care. It includes relying on God and accepting that he will hear and answer when we pray. We must put away our critical attitude when we come to him. God does not grant every thoughtless or selfish request. We must have confidence that God will align our desires with his purposes. A mind that wavers is not completely convinced that God's way is best. It treats God's word like any human advice and it retains the option to disobey. It facilitates between alliances and subjective feelings, the world's ideas in God's command. If your faith is new, weak, or struggling, remember that you can trust God, then be loyal to Him. To stabilize your wavering or doubtful mind, commit yourself wholeheartedly to God. If you have ever seen the constant rolling of huge waves at a sea, you know how restless they are subject to the forces of wind, gravity, and tide. Doubt leaves a person as unsettled as the restless waves. If you want to stop being tossed about, rely on God to show you what the best is for you. Ask Him for wisdom and trust that He will give it to you. Then your decisions will be sure and solid. Christianity brings a new dignity to the poor and not so influential people of this world. That dignity is most apparent in the church, where there are not, would you say, or should not be, any class distinctions. All believers share this distinction and dignity of being changed by the gospel and being charged with the mission of taking the same good news to the rest of the world. Believers know they have dignity before God because Christ died for them. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a great example of this true the dignity that she displays when she realized what god had done for her is seen in her prayer of praise called the magnificent whatever our social or economic situation james called us to be beyond it to our eternal advantages what we can have in jesus christ outweighs anything in this life knowing him gives us our high position where we find our true dignity the poor should be glad that riches mean nothing to God. Otherwise, these people who be considered unworthy, the rich should be glad that money means nothing to God because money is easily lost. We find true wealth by developing our spiritual life, not by developing our financial assets. God is interested in what is lasting, meaning our souls, not in what is temporary, like money and possessions, strive to treat each person as Christ would treat him or her. If wealth, power, and status mean nothing to God, why do we attribute so much importance to them and so much honor to those who possess them? Do your material possessions give you goals and your only reason for living? If they were gone, what would be left? What you have in your heart, not your bank account, matters to God and endures for eternity. Turning trials into triumphs. James' words, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, offer a vital key for turning trials into triumphs. Although we don't choose to have trials, we can choose how we respond. J.B. Phillips paraphrased it like this. Don't resent them as an intruders, but welcome them as friends. British counselor Selwyn Hughes reminds people that trials are our friends only if our goal is to become more like Jesus. If our goal is to avoid difficulties or mishaps, our trials will seem more like intruders. Hughes admits that he often needs to take his own advice. He recalls a time when he and his wife had pulled off to the side of the road to look at a map. Then a truck swerved and slammed into their car. They escaped injury, but their car was total. Then it started to rain. Hughes immediately battled with frustration, apprehension, and anger toward the other driver and found it extremely difficult to count it all joy. But as they waited for the police, he began to focus on how God would use the trial to make him more like Jesus. 
Gradually, the crisis became his friend. The next time you face a trial of some kind, make friends with it and allow God to use the situation to make you more like Jesus.